Well, greetings and welcome to the Evangelist Collective, which is a place and space for those of you who love the Lord and want to make Him known, get inspired, get encouraged, get equipped so that you can share the beautiful gospel, which is Jesus Christ. And today I'm so blessed to have my good friend all the way down in Nelson with us today. I want to welcome Hannah. Good to see you, Hannah Wilmsters. How are you doing? Yeah, doing good. Just had an amazing day. So it's been so good. Yeah. <laughs> And I want to talk about that a little bit later on, but why don't you just begin by telling us a little bit about yourself and let's dive into your faith journey. Yeah, sure. So um, as you can tell, I've got a bit of a mixed accent. So um, I was born in the UK and um, yeah, and then came over to New Zealand in 2010. So 10 years ago this September, which is like really, really special. <laughs> um, yep. So it's me and I've got um, my husband, who's amazing, and also my wee girl, she's two, and two crazy dogs. So that's kind of like a little bit about me. And then I guess my faith journey is, um, yeah, I mean, God's just so good. Like, so, so good. Like, I mean, I, I was brought up, my mum took me to church. I was brought up as a Christian. Um, and then um, along the way, just really experienced, like, um, just the miracles of God, like went to Soul Survivor, huge youth camps and was just completely on fire for Jesus from a really young age. So I saw miracles, um, moved in the Holy Spirit like real young. Um, but then unfortunately got bullied at school quite a lot. And then that kind of led to um, quite a lot of shame and insecurity. You know, as a teenager, you're like, what's going on? Um and uh, yeah, so that kind of led to hanging out with certain people and I started seeking like love in other places really. Um, so I really wrestled, I, I knew God was real and um, he and I really did love the Lord um, and, and do now, but like then spent, um, basically came away from God and spent, got caught up in drink and a, and a massive lifestyle of, of drugs like next level <laughs> um but still love god for those um those 10 years so that's what was kind of like mad about it like that i, I got caught up in, in the world uh relationship after relationship not good relationships um but you know the the people that i did meet on that journey you know i'm still really good mates with now you know so god uses everything you know they saw me at at rock bottom like sniffing lines every day and um selling drugs and stuff to the point of where now i went back to the uk last year and they can see that um you know i was able to go back and speak to them about like you know you can do this you can get out of addiction and i just i love god that for that you know um so my journey was kind of like uh loving the lord but really caught up in stuff um and basically i cried out to god i did 10 years um of, of drinking and partying um cried out to god i was like i actually can't follow you here i can't follow in the U you in the uk this is i've tried i've sat in the back of churches this is a no not happening um and so i cried out to him and within a few months i was in new zealand so um, one of my friends lived over here. She was like, hey, come live in New Zealand. And I remember her offering that to me ages ago. And so I took her up on that offer. Um, within months, God had just um, put everything in line. The money came in. I sold my car. Like, it, it sounds crazy, but I knew, like, knew my car got rode off. And then it, yeah, God, miracles. <laughs> miracles in every area. Um, and then I was in New Zealand and I've walked a journey. I'm really trying to find God. I lived in Franz Joseph for two years and then I, you know, you have to walk that journey coming um, from addiction, out of addiction. So I did two years in Franz Joseph, met my husband, um, carried on partying quite a bit. And, um, and then a guy walks into a bar. So I cried out to God again in Franz Joseph. I was like, I know you've got me here, but like, I really... I want to live a life pleasing to you. I want to live a life for you. And um, this guy walks into a bar and I used to have long blonde dreads and um, be pouring like vodka down people's necks and stuff. And, and he walks in and he walks up to the bar and he goes, and there was no one in the bar and it's a backpacker bar. Normally it's really busy. And he just goes, you're a Christian. And I was like, hmm. I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I would. Yeah, I, I believe in God. Like, I would never say that I don't, but I wouldn't call myself a Christian. Anyway, he started prophesying to me, like, in the literally, Franz Joseph is in the middle of nowhere. Um, and we went and sat down and he prayed for me. 
and I was like I just want to get somewhere where there's a church like where I can be planted and um and then within another few be careful what you ask for eh? like within another few months we had left Franz Joseph Alex was working in Indonesia on and off and so I got to choose the place I wanted to live and so we moved up to Nelson and then I started working at Stefano's the pizza place and in walks this guy that prophesied over me in Franz Joseph and was like hey do you want to come to church with me and I was like what and um and I started my journey oh it was a long quite a wee while maybe seven seven or eight seven eight nine eight years ago um in Richmond New Life Church and gave my life completely back to God and never looked back and it was just like as soon as I said yes it was just game on I had the craziest year when I came back to the Lord but um you know like everything that I went through from um, drinking to drugs, to, you know, the whole addiction. I know you hear that story quite a bit, but like God has really used me in that to be able to bring life to people and compassion to people stuck in addiction. So um, I just, it's not like, yeah, I look back on the 10 years and I go, man, it, what would have happened if I had carried on, you know, with youth camp and, and like that, but I don't regret in a way what I've done because now I get to come in and bring life to people through Jesus so um hey God uses everything eh so that and, that, and that's me I'm kind of like I ended up going to Bible college um and just uh, being on a on a journey like I wasn't someone that got healed instantly so it wasn't like I gave my life back to the Lord and then addiction everything went away it really actually wasn't I journeyed for a few years with God like ministry after ministry and I was just down the front of church every single Sunday like needing God to heal me and fix me and I was just so hungry for him um and then and then yeah so you did bible college for a year went to Wellington intern set up ministries came back and just go where God wants me really and I guess you could say completely grabbed me out of darkness and stuck me back on the path I should be in and um it still blows me away like I remember being stuck in addiction and just being like I will never be able to get out of this there is no way I see no I see no pathway at all to be able to do life out of what I'm doing and um yeah thank goodness God works in miracles eh? <laughs> so I know yeah, totally. yeah. It's like the Lord had his hand on you from the time you left you know yeah. England to where you are to like move to Franz Joseph and, and all that. It's like the Lord's hand was upon you and just even the point where he was going ahead of you. But um, <clears throat> but in the midst of all of that darkness, you still had this love yeah. for the Lord. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, there, there, was, there was still this longing. Yeah. Uh, the only way I can describe it is like this longing for something. But you, you said it before, like I was trying to look for love in all the wrong places and, and I came up short. But there was still this part of you. Mm. Um, that still love the Lord. And so um, how powerful was that? And I think you're, just your life, man, just even listening to it now, you just bring so much hope to people who may be stuck in addiction. And so you talked about those moments where, you know, it was a journey. Like it didn't just happen overnight. We broke free of addiction, but you had to walk this out. And you said, I, I had to come up to the front every Sunday morning just to get right with the Lord and get things thrown off. And that's powerful. But what would be some keys to really help people? Maybe someone who's watching today, who might be in the middle of just in the pit you know what, what would you do to what would you say to encourage them i would say um don't try and almost understand where you are you just take one step at a time so you literally you don't need to think about um yeah you know like i'm gonna get free it's gonna be amazing because it, it or you almost can't i felt like i couldn't think that um but i what would be my tips i guess would be to take Jesus's hand and go, do you know what? I don't know how you're going to do this, God, but I'm going to be 100% walk this out with you. That, that, that was for me, like literally I had not, I couldn't even see out of, you can't see out of the tunnel. You have no idea. You're like, I don't know how I'm going to function without drugs. I don't know how I'm going to give up a party lifestyle because all of that is security to me. I don't know how I'm going to give up men. I don't know, you know, you look at all of that and you go, I don't know how I will, stop all of that but god just holy spirit conviction i think the more you fall in love with god 
the more that, that God does in you, I actually realized that that's when stuff fell off me. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I didn't even have to do much. Like I just said, yeah, I want to change. Like, and I got to the point of like, I, I was so tiny, like I was real sick. So I used to sniff ketamine every day and um, like wherever I was. And we, that was our party thing. That was every day. I got so tiny, um, but I, you don't recognize it. But, you know, God just restores and restores. But he wants your yes. He always just goes, hey, you know, like I can talk to people like I speak to other girls, you know, who are stuck in different addictions and stuff. But you can tell when someone's ready or not. But I had to hit the bottom like I was tiny and I was just mm, I was all over the place. But one of my things why I gave my life back to the Lord as well is that I had the fear of God. I kid you not. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I remember working in the bar and just having this whole thing just going. Oh, I don't know. You know, like, I don't know where I'm at right now. And I know that if Jesus came back tomorrow, like. It's not looking too fresh for me. Like, even though a guy came into the bar and says, you're a Christian, I really believe that was the Lord showing me, do you know, what? I've still got my mark on you. I've still got my hand on you and I still love you. Like, whether you're doing all of this stuff, I've still got you, Hannah. So, but, that you know, I had to deal with consequences of what I got up to. Do you know what I mean? I was a little bit of, yeah. So, <laughs> that's it. Just just take care of it. <laughs> just and it's very beautiful and i just love how the lord's just you know given you beauty for ash, like taking yeah giving you beautiful ashes man like he's just clothed you with his love and, and righteousness so powerful just take jesus's hand that's yeah. that's on point um and i just love how you just spoke about you know just need to fall in love with god be filled with the holy spirit he wants your yes and that's just so powerful um and i know that for some people who may be watching that may be the key that just unlocks the door to their freedom yeah um so and, and even just this is this is the gold um quote that you just mentioned that the lord still has his mark on you oh man it's it's powerful like yes, from the yeah. time you said yes as a little child during all those the outbreak of miracles back back in your home country like from that time to where you are today his hand or his mark was on you and it's just so, so beautiful he never like when i was 19 i i disappeared and hit the road and, and went to australia when i was 19 and um, like we were popping pills left, right and centre and all of that. And um, my mum was so worried. Do you know, the reason that I'm here right now is because I've got a praying mum and an absolute loving dad and a good God. Like praying mum, I kid you not, she was hard out. And that's that's why I'm here. So big ups to all the praying mums and dads out there. <laughs> but when I was 19, like we'd been partying and we were driving in Australia and um, we came off the road Like we we're in a convertible Jeep, came off the road, came down like a bank, full speed, like the guy I was driving with, my boyfriend at the time had fallen asleep at the wheel. I was asleep with my legs up on the dashboard. Um, and we went down this bank and we went up this slope and into the air and the whole um, Wrangler Jeep tipped and went to go upside down, turned back around, smashed on the ground and just came to a halt. And a lady jumped out the car and goes, I've literally, the hand of God has just put your truck on, on the ground. And I just knew right then at the age of 19, like once again, God had his hand on me and sent his angels. And it was like, it is not your time to die. You know, like the enemy had always tried to take me out when I was real young. Now I'm just like, you don't have a chance. <laughs> but um, you, it, do you know what I mean? Like it's it's even when I was 19 and I was living a sinful life, God's like, you're still mine. You know, like I still love you. You're still my daughter. I'm still going to protect you. I'm just going to wait because I know you're going to come back to me. So little extra <laughs> wow just again his his unfailing love eh? mm. just Huge. a patient father just you said it pray mum a loving father mm -hmm. uh that, um, just again mothers if you're watching just keep <laughs> praying for them. so uh children so it just definitely brings hope hey let's come into the present day today so man there's so much happening in your world right now um yeah. And we want we want to get to that because it's so exciting what the Lord has placed on your heart. 
for this coming season. But why don't we just take a moment, maybe just jump in another lane, and it's just when you begin to just share um, what the Lord has placed on your heart for what you sense the church is coming into for this hour. Okay, so um, when we were all in lockdown for COVID, um, one of the things that he he started to show me was one, don't get involved in this stuff, <laughs> you know, online and and stuff like that. Keep yourself pure. Um, and this and the second one, he showed me a picture of um, the world, and he was shaking it, and he was shaking like all of the uglies out. And it was almost like Jesus said to me, he's like, you know, you, we've come up as all, we've come up with all these terms as Christians and. And, you know, um, na names and labels. And, and he just is like, am I not enough, you know, as Jesus? Am I not enough? And so I believe right now that he is, um, and I've spoken to quite, you know, a few people about it. And we're just like, man, you know, like there's deliverances going on left, right and center. And there's like ju just, you know, at home and in church and with each other and life groups and on the streets, you know, like it's God it is coming back for a spotless bride. And you're seeing that you're seeing that take place and he's also activating the church. So it's not just God is done with people sitting in the seats at church. Like he said, take up the cross. Jesus said, take up the cross and follow me. He didn't say take up your cross and go and sit down in a seat with it. Like that's that. No. So I really believe there's an awakening. Um, he spoke to me um, this week. You know, there's a callback going on. Like we, we were um, out on the streets today for an hour with Alistair Simmons, you know, like, um, and it, oh man, oh, to get, find your lane in life and you're on fire. Like if you're a Christian, your life should never be boring. Um, and like we're out on the streets and like God just called this girl out hey and we're sat with her and she used to be a Christian and she's into new age stuff now and she gave her life back to the Lord this evening and I just saw a picture of like heaven celebrating just this quick glimpse I was like whoa <laughs> you know and I was just like man this is you know this is why we do what we do like oh God's just like activating and stirring he's activating and stirring the church that is listening you know he's he's waking up his people he's saying hey you don't want to miss this harvest like revival is here but it's also coming in another form like it's coming it's coming a lot bigger than you could ever imagine and i guess something he's training me and 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 people of the church to go don't look at what was but get you get your faith Get your faith to the level of what's in the word of God, you know, because that's what he's going to bring. He's going to bring miracles, healings. He's going to bring, I was sitting and just asking the Lord before I jumped on. And I just got like baptisms in the thousands. Do you know what I mean? Like kids and adults. And yeah, there's, he's getting people ready, I guess, is what I'm seeing. And um, I'm speaking to people with like, you know, they, they have issues or they know people and they're like, oh, you know issues from the past i'm like wouldn't th that's done now you know like we need to look at what god is doing now what's god saying about that person now how's god going to use that person because there's no room in the bride right now for Im impurity you know so i guess it's a bit heavy but like it's basically revival isn't it <laughs> It is beautiful um and you know you can sense it's in the air like um you can see the evidence of it around like as, as you say there are people whose hearts are open and more sensitive to the to to what the lord is doing um and you're seeing people just respond to the gospel you spoke you said it was like awakening there's a callback there's a revival but in another form you know i i love the the stories of the old revivals and the welsh revival the loser street you know the hebrides of revival those are all amazing revivals and those should always build faith but again the lord's doing something new right yeah 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 we um me and um so me esther and bianca are heading up the flood um with um alistair and jono and um yeah we we're just like buzzing we're just seeing that like this new revival coming in is like you know like how how i talked about like how it took time to heal you know we, we've been really feeling like this revival is like a boom 
you know, like you come in, you get healed, you get set free, you get deliv delivered and you're just like on fire for Jesus and, and then you're off. Like there's no time for, oh, I'm going to take a few years to sort myself out. We really believe that like literally the spirit of God is going to move so powerfully that it's just going to, yeah, <laughs> it's going to be nuts. There's, there's a quickening in the spirit. Do you know what I mean? There's there's a there's no fence sitting anymore. Like I sat on the fence for 10 years. That's something I've really felt from the Lord. Like that's why when we go out on the streets and we do what we do, he's just like that person used to walk with me. That person there. You've seen people that have walked away from church. You're like, he is gathering people back up. You know, he's the callback is happening. It's like a trumpet sound over this nation it's 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 loud and it's amazing and people are ready to hear the gospel we the church have to step up that's what god's calling us to do it's like clear your own stuff up because seriously i've got people i've got a harvest and i and i need my workers now <laughs> right right and there's such a call as you say like um for the church to step up i, I love that and so what what kind of exhortation or encouragement, uh, say, if those who are watching who are part of the church who may kind of feel like I'm sitting on the fence, like, you know, I'm kind of comfortable and I'm kind yeah. of where I am, what would you suggest to them right now? I would say be bold. And I was terrified. Like Alistair Simmons, like, hit it on the head and he's been training us this weekend and he says, you've got to die to yourself. And, you know, I'm like, I've got to die to myself. I'm going out on the streets because this isn't about me. This isn't about me looking good. This is about saving souls. If we hadn't have gone out today and we thought, ah, we'll just stay at home and have a cup of tea, that girl on the steps would not have given her life to the Lord. You know, like we've got to get our values right. So, and that, and I speak for myself as well, you know, like we're all, there's always something else to do, but God's really like, you know, I, I just go for it. You know, whatever scares you, Kate said to me, one of my good friends the other day, Kate Dixon, she said to me, it's not comfortable. If you're comfortable, basically something's wrong. So we have to get uncomfortable for Christ. But but um, be bold, like it's look at what your giftings are on your life and go, God, basically what I've said and how I've ended up where I am now is I've gone, use me. Use me. Chuck out big prayers. Use me to change the nations. Use me to change the people around me now. Use me and my family, God. Like, it's just simple chat to God. And he's like, sweet, you gave me a yes, I can use you. Let's do this. Right, powerful. Words like awakening, uh, stirring up, wake up, O oh sleeper. You know, there's an acceleration, as you mentioned before, that people are going to come and receive Jesus. And Things are going to just literally break off their lives. Addiction, wrong thinking, anxieties, yeah. all those things. So those are some incredible things for us to look forward to. And so in the meantime, we're praying, right? We're, we're, we're yeah. believing. We're, we're just lifting our eyes to see what the Lord is doing right now. And as you say, there are opportunities every day. Yeah. Yeah. Like literally, I kind of sometimes like, yeah. You know, like you walk as an evangelist, like you walk past everyone. You're like, I want to talk to them. I want to talk to them. But at the same time, you're like... I really just need to go and get the vegetables. <laughs> do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You live more normal as well. Do you know what I mean? It's like, um, yeah, so. It marks you. You know, it just marks you and it's normal. Like, um, we think that way, right? It's like, oh, I've got this task to do, but there is a person I need to call, someone I need to connect with just across the street, yeah. and you're like, do I? <laughs> so so incredible um the lord is doing something powerful across our nation i believe it's it's happening already and uh we're going to talk about the flood so you know the lord put this this dream on your heart and i want you to kind of unravel that for us what the lord is doing in you you just mentioned it briefly but unpack that for us yeah so when i first moved to new zealand and you know on that journey um more likely a few years in um i suddenly got this huge impression about stadiums and I was like, man, yeah, that would be amazing. And I was like, okay. And now I know, looking back on it, that it was God speaking to me about stuff. But back then I was still learning his voice properly and all of that. Um, and, yeah, so I was like, okay. And then I kind of, you know, th that stuff you kind of sits in your heart, sits in your spirit, but you don't really do anything about it. And then you just completely forget about it. And then suddenly God, like, almost opens that box back up and is like, okay right 
and I started thinking about stadiums and then my friend was like hey you should speak to um this guy about this and I was like oh I don't know and then his book appeared on my desk and then my phone tried to ring him and then I was like okay all right I'll do it I'll do it um and spoke to this guy and he was just like yeah this is um this is amazing so started speaking to him about stadiums event and I was just like who am I to think you know that we could run a run a revival run a crusade like and so I had to go on a bit of a journey <laughs> journey with the Lord about that and that's fine um and then suddenly by opening that door and opening that vision and that dream like next minute it's just rolling and i'm like on this roller coaster and i'm just like what is happening so how really that's got birthed recently is because we're all talking about revival and we're all talking about being part of revival but what was really stirring me is what the heck are we going to do about it like what are we what because I, I that's how i work i'm like i'm a i'm a doer like i like pioneering and putting things in place so i was just like okay well what are we what are we going to do um and then obviously the stadium thing came up and so what's kind of happened with that is god really starting to orchestrate a um a crusade up in the region of nelson um tasman but we know that it's a lot bigger than that and i had a meeting with ywam today and that was just like god breathed all over it and it was amazing um yeah I'm just, we're just like me uh, and some of the girls like have got together and we've just got the blessing of my senior pastor and um and alistair simmons is coming in and ju we're just uh just going after the heart of god over the region and um kate and jimmy have started a prayer movement and that's been incredible and so we've just started seeing bits of the jigsaw come together so it all started with a really small seed from God of even me questioning, is that God? And now we're in a place where we go, OK, we're thinking about the venue. And so that's our next prayer point at the moment. So the flood basically is a crusade and um, which will be part of revival. But we're already out on the streets now, if that makes sense. So that, you know, it's not just like it's not an event. This is like the flood is like the 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 presence of god like he showed me um different floods all around the nation but right now it, it's a flood that will come with, um, by the presence of god and will just literally blitz the place <laughs> um uh, something that we you know we haven't seen since the revivals before um and movement mean was a move of god so flood was the presence of god and he wants to be a move of god it's not an event it's a, a, it's creating a a crusade <laughs> you know we're just partnering with god i just said yes you know like literally i've just said yes and actually uh, the journey that i've been on i've also said no <laughs> like because that's what happens when you pioneer but you know you've got good people around you that stand you back up and go hey god is saying this 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 is the vision you know what he's saying you know that you can do this and you're like okay okay you take a little break then you get back up and now um we're in line for november next year and we're going to be running a three-day we think obviously things are still but we definitely know that we're doing a crusade and we know that it's in november next year um and we're just starting to look at sponsors and partners and you know all that stuff with it but we're, we're just like god has just shown me he's like you with finances he's like hannah i'm going to do a miracle you know and i'm going to flood through i'm going to flood through your finances for this and i really am starting to see that will impact other people like today yesterday i was praying about finances and a, and a guy comes up to me after i've been on the streets one of the team and he goes god has told me here's a hundred dollars for petrol for you and i was just like you know it was the start and he goes this is what you're going to see this is the provision of God that you're going to see. And I was like, man, like, you know, when you're just like so overwhelmed by the heart of God, I was like, oh, um, but, you know, so God was just saying, hey, you really can trust me for this movement um, and teams will come around. And so we're just so excited. Like the Lord has shown me that the worship will be incense going up to him and a new foundation will be will be put down on the ground here. So uh, to be honest, I haven't got a clue what's going to happen, but I'm just leaning into the Lord and I'm just going one step at a time with what he wants to do over this nation. So we're just vessels and we just have fun with it. <laughs>
I, I like it. You know, it's as you mentioned before, it's going after the heart of God, right? And this heart is for people, and and just your willingness and obedience. You know, it's just open the door for blessing to come in, man. How cool was it to get that that hundred dollars oh, for your yeah. people? Like I, <laughs> cry. I was like, I prayed okay. yesterday, and I said, and you've just bought me up a voucher. Another chick has messaged me this evening and I thought she was to do with the petrol voucher about money. She was like, I was praying to give someone some money on the street today, but actually, what's your address? And I was like, oh, you're talking about the petrol voucher. She's like, what petrol voucher? And I was like, okay. Oh, yeah. I was like, whoa, okay, this is crazy. So, um, yeah. Uh, this is cool. Just, you got a nice dream. I mean, this is it stretch your faith you know, stretch your faith and man and I, um, i'm so excited about this the stream that the lord's placed on your heart and not just for you but for everyone else who's going to be inspired from just listening to it just inspires faith in me because i know this stuff happening here the lord's yeah. been speaking to key people in Manurua, auckland and um just you know revival has been the key theme or word that's been just kind of going around so whatever's happening in nelson is happening here and the lord's just hopefully reconciling the two, you know, and there's going to be a massive revival that's breaking out. So um, watch the space, eh? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, de yeah. stay tuned for it. It's going to be good. <laughs> hey, just as we kind of wrap this up, man, I'd love for you to pray for those who are watching. And, um, you know, just what really the word that kind of stood out for me, um, just as you were sharing before, was just like, am I not enough? Mm -hmm. um, you, you mentioned that just before as you were praying. As we were talking about what what do you sense the Lord is doing in this time? Am I not enough? Um, and there may be people who are watching this who may be in a place where they they need the provision of God. They need God to move in their health and in other areas. And may, or maybe it's just being obedient to the to the God sized dream that the Lord's placed in their heart. You know. Mm -hmm. So am I not enough? That's powerful. So I'd love for you to pray into that. But also anything else that just kind of stirs in you to pray just to encourage and enlarge people's heart and their faith yeah sure yeah we can pray <laughs> oh man father i just thank you lord god that you are so huge you are creator of the universe father god and i just pray for all the people that are listening to this that have got dreams um in their spirits dreams in their hearts where they've gone hey i'm not good enough for this or this is way too big lord we just um call those dreams and those visions out right now in jesus name lord god people that haven't been bold to go out on the streets but have been thinking and dreaming of and, and actually seeing in the spirit you know them healing people god i pray that you will wake them up and you'll give them a boldness and you'll give them a strategy of how they can be themselves but do you know living out the gospel so father i pray that this evening people will um feel encouraged lord god that they will feel on fire i just release a fire in people's bellies and and an awakening i speak awakening over uh, everyone lord god that they will just know that when they jump in that lane with you it is so cool and it's so exciting so yeah lord be the the strength and the comforter in um in people's lives right now lord god thank you jesus amen 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 hey awesome hey thank you for your time i really appreciate you taking the time out 